Happy 2022, everyone. 22. Oh, man. I think I know what time it is. It's time for Motorsport 101's Formula E season preview. Beautiful work. Oh, Beautiful work. Where are you? <laughs> what better way to start 2020 part three, as I like to call it, with a Sid Vicious reference. Hey guys, I'm Dre Harrison. Welcome to episode 339 of Motorsport 101. And we're back to, to kick off the 2022 motorsport season here on M101. Hope you guys enjoy the show and you're with us again. In this episode, we'll be re previewing the 2022, or should I say technically 2021-2022 Formula E season, season eight of our favorite electri electrified series. But before we get into that, let's go around the horn real quick. First up, the man with the intro, Mr. RJ O'Connell. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, already been a busy couple of weeks. We've already had Dakar. We've already mm -hmm. had Rally Monte Carlo. Congratulations to Isabel Galmish for being the first Woman co-driver to win a WRC in 25 years alongside some retired gymnast and electrician, I guess. Yeah. Driving a Ford. I don't know. Yeah. What, Sebastian so, Loeb. What, what year is this? <laughs> 2012, obviously. Clearly, clearly. Because uh, we've woken up, it's 2022, and Sebastian Loeb is still winning rallies. Because, of course, um, just, just, just how God intended um, his 80th career <laughs> rally win. It's, it makes me laugh even just saying it. Um, he still do flat-footed backflips. Yeah. I, I, I saw... I, I, okay, I didn't know the man was a gymnast, right? I, I'm not the biggest rally guy in the world. So I saw that on my jaw hit the ground after the rally. I was like, what the fuck? He, 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 he could be a rally guy and he can do backflips standing up. I'm just like, is there anything he can't do? Yeah. Carl <laughs> Edwards cribbed this gimmick from Loeb. I know. Not... <laughs> Carl Edwards needs to stand on the door cell. He needs elevation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't even... I, I, I said, I never knew Loeb could do that. So it blew my mind. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I was really glad I saw him do that. And yeah, Loeb winning an epic Monte Carlo rally over Sebastian Ogier. That was fun. Uh, wasn't that right, King? What else you got? <sighs> uh, I got a... Uh, hey, we, we got a new Formula E qualifying format. We all knew this day was coming, but jeez. Oh, I'm so ready to talk <laughs> about this. I'm oh, so ready. Oh boy! It's like the day has the day of reckoning has arrived. <laughs> oh no! The day of reckoning has arrived. We are going to have a new Formula E qualified for. We're talking about that very shortly, and, and it's uh, safe to say it split the room a touch. Just just throwing that one out there. Um, also, Cam Buckley. Hello, sir. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, back after a couple of episodes off, uh, you know, holiday season in retail. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Of course. And uh, what can you do? yeah, just just contemplating the fact that you know we just can't beat these guys. <laughs> He's so old that we just can't beat this guy. <laughs> the I two best rally drivers that. in the world are retired. <laughs> and they're still better than everybody else. <laughs> Sebastian Loeb is 48 next month. 48! <laughs> Just... I, I, uh, I aspire um... to have the, the, that level of joint dex dexterity at 48. I already don't. I'm 24. No, no, yeah. He, he's literally twice your age. And, uh, yeah, here we are. And uh, to, <laughs> to take my mind off of that... <sighs> I guess I just gotta watch some. Uh, just I, I just gotta watch some sports cars. We got sports yeah, cars well, back this weekend. More yeah, on yes. twenty four is back this weekend, and stay tuned because we we have some surprises for that at the conclusion of this episode. Mm. More on that soon. More on that soon. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, so. Let's have a gone round the horn before we get into the Formula E season preview. But 
catch up on where you can find us real quick. We're on YouTube.com forward slash Motorsport 101. We're on Facebook.com forward slash Motorsport 101. We're on Twitter at Motorsport underscore 101. If you'd like to follow our personal handles, you can at Harrison 101 HD, at Ryan Eric King, at CBuck917, and at RJ O'Connell. You can follow us on Instagram at Motorsport 101 Pod. And you can check all of those details out on our website, Motorsport101.com. That's cool. Look, 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 there you go. RJ's showing it off right there. He's showing off the privacy right. policy because That's we right. care about your data. <laughs> it's, 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 and then there's also all our content there as well. That's also just as important, I promise. Yeah. We're collecting that, your personal it? information uh, <laughs> for, uh, for, for only good purposes. We promise. That's we're going we're to mint say. all of it as NFTs. No! No! Listen to the NFT podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I'm into I NFTs, want. all right. I'm into nice fucking Toyotas. <laughs> yes, yes. That's the only about, NFT that's acceptable around here. What about what about, we're not talking about Toyotas? What about some nice we're fucking Tyrells? But we're not talking about Tyrells. Not, not, not because not, they're not, not electric. Not on this show. No, not on this show. We're talking about electric cars. And all we need to know about Formula E going into the 2022 World Championship season, season number eight, we'll be breaking down all the teams, all the drivers. So little things you may need to keep in mind as well. And as well as the calendar and the brand new qualifying format, which we'll talk about right after this. <laughs> I'm so happy to talk about this new format because <laughs> we all said after last season things needed to be different. Well, this is different, King. Oh, this is most certainly different. And... Mm. It is. We've been noting. We've we've known it's been coming for a long time. When 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 they first threw out the idea of a knockout qualifying format, not not like F one style knockout qualifying. No, we're ta- we're talking bracket knockout qualifying. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a two stage qualifying format where the first stage will be a group stage with two. 12 minute open sessions you can do as many laps as you want and a second stage which eight drivers will advance out of the first two stages into uh an eight driver one lap hot uh, uh, an eight driver one shot hot lap knockout tournament Mm -hmm. uh so pretty much uh in the group stage the drivers the drivers are split into two groups based on championship position, uh, oh, even numbered position in one group, odds in the other. Uh, fastest four in each group move on, and uh, the way that they're seated for the bracket, obviously fastest in one group faces the slowest in the other group, and so on until you know uh, you have all eight drivers seated out, and then there's the first round's the quarterfinal, then a semifinal, and if you win the final, you get pole. When Ugh. I first heard of this proposal, I was thinking, I was fearing like, oh God, they're not going to have like knockout qualifying all the way down to like, we're not going to start with like a round of 24, are we? That would just be <laughs> fucking tedious and take too long. But now that I know how this works, I think I'm not going to knock it until I try it. I think people have come in thinking that it's more complicated than it actually is. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, I, I, this is going to reward consistency. I, I'd say it's been oversold as being complicated, mainly because it's been explained by Formula E themselves and by certain publications with way too much information than necessary. Right. Yeah, it's like... It's almost like they've been over defensive of their own new format by going to complicated diagrams and brackets that probably just aren't necessary. My initial gut feeling when I saw this was it's okay, and I think that I think I think it will take certainly take out some of the randomness of like the lottery format and guys getting put in certain groups and obviously disadvantages and advantages that come with that. And whatnot, I think we'll get a much better idea of consistency amongst the field. The only issue I have it have with it as a fan is that I think the dual format in part two is going to be boring with just seeing two cars go in on trap for a one lap shootout and then having that happen seven times to get through 
the second half of the format because you need to have seven matchups to complete a an eight person bracket. So I, from an entertainment standpoint, have concerns about the second half of that group format personally, um, because. The one that jumps out to me is IndyCar. That's probably the nearest thing we have to that in terms of a knockout format. But at least even in the final round, you have six cars in it and you still get some of the spontaneous action of cars continually going over the line. Formula E's not going to have that. And that worries me a little bit. I don't know how you guys I mean, feel about it. but for, for a lot of the purists out there, like how many times have you've seen people talk about, oh, I wish one-shot qualifying were to return to Formula 1. It's like, mm, well, mm. this is this is pretty much the closest you're going to get to that. Pretty much. And, but I was not one of those people. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and neither am I. Actually, you know, having slept on this, because initially having seen it, having had it be read to me by FE and with those charts from certain publications that we will not name on this fine... Uh, network here they're redacted <sighs> i was trying to be diplomatic and then you just kick the door off the hinge um <laughs> what i'd actually like to see is basically double up the double up each of the duels so four cars on track rather than two and i think i'd be more on board with it but anything's better than the random we have to punish the best cars nonsense that we had the last couple of years because it just made every race complete chaos um i'd like to see how this plays out before panning it or yeah. um in or you know advocating yeah. for it one way mm. or the other mm. I, I was I'm willing to get i was willing to give uh knockout qualifying circa early 2016 formula one a try mm. I, i'm open to anything as a, it like, can only be better than um, that knockout qualifying yeah. Like <laughs> honest to like honestly to me the the deciding factor to me is like how much time is gonna be in between each of the duels. If it's like mm. near instantaneous while say, you know, the two while the last driver in one duel is doing their in lap, the the first driver in the next duel is doing their out lap, I'll be fine with that. Yeah, uh that's fair. But I think I also agree with Cam where uh I think it would be a lot faster if, say, in the quote-unquote quarterfinal round, instead of having a head-to-head -head duel, it's uh, a four-way, and the two drive the fastest two drivers advance, and then in the final, it's a four-driver fa final, fast driver gets pole. Yeah, sure. I, yeah, I, think, I think that's see. Look, look, Alejandro, listen to us. We're already giving you instant feedback to improve on what's not a terrible idea in theory. I will, um, I will, t I will I, take my payment solely in four hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars JPEGs. Sweet, <laughs> that works. Um, you know, like I said, cast. <laughs> um, look, like I said, I, I, of course, scene will be believing, and I'll be watching very curiously to see how it plays out in real time. Like, like King alluded to the little things like time differences and, you know, how long the whole thing will take to play out. I'm going to be very curious. Why? I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I certainly think it will solve the old format's biggest problem of the randomness, which was the biggest problem, in my opinion, with the old format. I think that will certainly get solved here at least. And that, for me, is automatically a net positive on what we had before. Well, from an entertainment standpoint, I said I'm not fully convinced yet, but again, we'll see how it plays out in real time. I'm actually, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about how this will hold out. I'm actually not all that against this. Um, I, I guess I said I was never the biggest one-shot qualifying guy, but and, um, you know. and honestly, I think one of the factors that's being underplayed is the group stages are probably going to be really intense because only yeah. four drivers transfer. I would say it's going to be... Four out be, of, what, 11? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like Q2 from Formula 1 on steroids where, like, fewer cars mm. are getting through. And another thing as well with the duels, like, like you said, with the overlap, like, having two duels happen separately on track, not necessarily a four, a four-way session, just more cars on track, I think, would, uh... Yeah. I just like seeing racing cars do the vroom vroom, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. Or in we're, this we're, case, we're, the, uh, we're a set, we're... the whoosh whoosh. <laughs> the guys of simple pleasures. 
<laughs> you want to yeah, talk no, about a couple of teams it. that were worried may not feature at least immediately mm. in the uh, second stage of this uh, knockout qualifying format? Mm. Yeah. It's hard <laughs> to believe, but Neo Triple Three by order of lineage was the team that actually won the first driver's championship with Nelson PK Jr. way back in the day. Uh, but they were bottom of the table last year. They got Oliver Turby coming back, and they brought in rookie Dan Tickdom, former Williams mm-hmm. Academy driver, two-time Macau Grand Prix Formula 3 winner, um, noted just really even keel guy. Uh, he won two races and finished fourth in F2 last season, but he said, quote, it would be surprising for us to make a leap. It's going to be two or three rounds before I'm properly dialed into the car, and you can't come from driving Formula 2 and very quick single-seater cars to driving this as it is completely different. He is one of three rookies in this field. Um... Thoughts, feelings, Neo, triple three. Uh, like, I, unless something drastically changes, I don't think they're leaving the bottom. Uh, you know, Tictum saying it'll take two or three rounds, that's also a bit ambitious, because a lot of the rookies, well, a lot of FE drivers, when they were rookies, said it took pretty much most of the season. Well, we yeah, know how yeah. high Dan Tictum is on his own supply. We've had more than enough proof <laughs> of this over uh, the last half decade. Um, can't really disagree. They're Neo Triple Three. Um, I got to mm. see them in person. Their car sounds different to everyone else's, and that you can actually hear the mediocrity. <laughs> I just want the gap to be closer uh, from from last year to this year, but it is going to be difficult for them operationally and mechanically to try and close that gap. They're not short of driver talent because no, for as much of a head case as Dictum is, you know, um, he w- he could he can match the likes of Lando Norris um, on his day, um, and Oliver Turvey has been busting his ass to carry this team. Uh, somebody, somebody, please uh, give that man uh, a thorough checkup on his back. He is on my wall for good reason. Like, look, he's one of the hardest working dudes in top tier motorsport. And like, you, Oliver Turvey is universally respected by everyone in Formula E because one, he works damn hard, and everybody knows he's damn good, but has never had the equipment to really justify, you know, the talent that's come behind him. Look. Talent's never been the problem with Neo. Um, look, say what you will about Tictum. He is a talented driver. There is no doubt about that. Um, you know, he is good. Um, like I said, I think... like For, for Tictum, his quotes were modest. <laughs> like, <laughs> this was modest by Tictum standards. Um, so, I, I maybe he's turned over in you. There's been a lot of chat about Tictum coming into Formula E, and a lot of people were just immediately shitting on it because of the name, and I don't want to do that. I want to give everybody a fair shake. And... I, I was reading up about this, and Tictum even considered retiring from motorsport after the last off season. He genuinely yeah, he, he knows that this is his last chance. He knows this is probably his last chance to make a good impression and stick mm. around. Yeah, and he, he sounded like someone that was, you know, cautious, but at the same time, you know, grounded. I hope he's learned something from his experience of trying to get into Formula One because. If he if he just shut up and let his talent do the talking, he'd probably be just all right, you know. And I mean, I don't mean that in a, in a I mean that in a genuinely positive sense. He he'd be fine, um, you know. It's, you know, we, we've been saying it but, for years about Dan, and the the, mm. the talent behind the wheel is not the problem. No, it never has been. Problem is, he's driving for Neo, so they're probably going to be at the bottom anyway. But hey, yeah. you hey, never hey. know. <laughs> One improvement can't finish twelfth again this year. That's right. Dang. That's so, right. so the uh, bar, so the bar was down in like the inner core of the earth, and it ju- or the outer core just punched right up into the mantle just a little bit. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. into the mantle now, and yeah, on that subject, I think it's a, I think it's a perfect time to talk about Dragon Penske Autosport, second from oh, the bottom. They, uh, in an alternate universe, Sergio Sante Camera and Antonio Giovinazzi, one of our other rookies, uh, would be a great Formula One team. But as it happens, they're driving for the second lowest ranked team in the sport. 
Antonio Giovinazzi has said uh, after a tough preseason testing, I'm not feeling 100% with the car, so I want to first achieve that to feel okay with the car, all the procedures, the energy management, and then I try to see where we can be. Giovinazzi coming over was a big deal. You know, he gets out of mm. one middle to low tier uh, metallic red and white car in Formula One and jumps into another mid to low tier metallic red and white car in Formula E. Uh, mm. from very, very pretty Jay cars, Penske. those dragons. Very pretty in the sun. They are. Just not very quick. And again, mechanically and operationally challenged. Yeah, the mess. I I'd say, uh, for the most part, considering that they decided to uh, give up being a manufacturer starting in Gen 3 next season, mm. you can say for Dragon, it, it doesn't happen a lot of years, but it feels like for Dragon, they're viewing this as a, as a rebuilding year. Just get everything settled and try to get a good deal with a manufacturer for next season as a customer. Yeah, yeah it's good yeah. that they actually lo- seem like they have a direction for a change. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I, I know it has been. I don't come. Yeah, I mean, for myself, I and mean, the driver lineup is perfectly. I would say. I would say it's a damn good driver lineup. I saw them put some very good moves. I saw saw Ca- camera put on very good moves on other drivers, and he put Sergio that car. Camera walked into his first week in Super Formula and put it on pole. I mean, he wrecked during the race, but still, he's quick. <laughs> yeah, you you don't do that. You don't do that via fluke, and. He was putting the Dragon last year where it really had no right to be more often than not. So if they can just settle down this year, bring home some okay results, and partner up with, I don't know, a DS or a Porsche or a Maserati. Jaguar or even a Maserati. We got to talk. Yeah, Maserati's back. That's 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 just wild. Um, well, mm. well. When when we get to a team applicable, we'll go deeper into that. And yeah. I think mm. I think for Jay Penske, the temptation is too strong to be like, what if I partner up with Penske? What if I partner up with Porsche just like my dad? <laughs> Gee, dad <I'm> just <laughs> this is like how you. my dad will love me. <laughs> oh God. Okay, oh. You know that you know that, that recent Formula One driver clout, that Italian Jesus clout. <laughs> That's going to win him so many fan boost votes. I already yeah. see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that will certainly help. I mean, it's good for one free overtaker race, and that's only going to help. Look, Sete Camera had a knack of putting that Dragon Car in the top eight on a semi-regular basis. The ability for Camera, the upside in him is certainly there. Um, I hope it comes a little bit more consistently. Um, Geo is going to be a tough rookie. I think that's going to be the theme here because it tends to be for Formula E for most people. Um, you know, but I think I think Camera was a bit better than his twenty second in the drivers' championship last year showed. A little bit, yeah. Um, I'm look, I'm yeah. I, I'd, I'd say he's a bit a bit better than that pound for pound. So. You know, I maybe that might be enough to take Dragon off like the the ten or eleven spot, depending on how this year goes. But I think King's right. I think there's a lot of reshuffling going on in that camp right now. Just get your ducks in a row, and then see what you can do from there for for, for Gen Three. I, I think would be the minimum expectation, more than anything else. Should we move up to Nissan? <laughs> oh boy, this is really interesting because mm. this is a team that should not have finished tenth uh, last season. And they it, it, damn sure better not finish 10th this season with the talent that they have. So they've kept Sebastian Buemi, franchise driver, and they brought in Maxi Gunther from Andretti Ooh. Autosport. Um, Buemi said of Gunther, he's an impressive driver with lots of pace, and I can't wait to work together with him. I feel like we're in a great place to pursue success and hopefully clinch some victories next season. I really hope so. It's, yeah, it's, like. Mm. it's hard to place where Nissan's going to be this year. Because obviously last year they were intending to enter a dual motor car that got banned and they had to start from scratch. So pretty much Mm. they spent the entire year on the back foot. This year, uh, you're going to have to, you're really going to have to start moving back up the field. Yeah. If testing was anything to go by, that car still got a top speed deficit, and it looks like it could be another tough year for Nissan. It's a shame, um, because 
Max Gunther, I think, was one of the star talent acquisition moves of the entire roster this year. Gunther is, is really, really good when he wants to be. Um, let's not forget, he's still the youngest ever race winner in this series. And, he's like, he he can win races on on his day comfortably. He's one of the, he's got one of the highest ceilings I think of anybody in the series. But he's driving for the for the tenth place team in the manufacturers last season. I mean, don't get me wrong. Last season was a colossal mess, but somebody had to finish down there, and yeah, and unfortunately it was Nissan. It's a hell of a team on paper. Like you know, established brand, former champion. All-time wins leader, Sebastian Bemi, let's not forget, as well. And Gunther is an incredible talent. But I think the car is probably is going to be what holds them back again this year. I, I, I could be proven wrong, but I my gut feeling is I think they could be down the blunt end again. That's my fear. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Look, if Nissan can retool a 15-year-old uh, 370Z into something that looks fresh and fun to drive... Uh, I'd like to think that their Formula E team, uh, which is basically like 50% of their motorsports operations now, uh, can make some form of improvement. I'm a big Sebastian Buemi guy, and Maxi Gunther is really fun to watch, especially when he's on his game. I mean, Christ, he was, dra- mm-hmm. he was the guy that was dragging, dragging places that they had no right to be, and then he won multiple races with BMW Andretti. Mm-hmm. It's kind of winner bust, but uh, I, I have good... I've I, I feel good about this team. Okay. You know, how do He's I feel? On it. How do I feel about <laughs> Nissan? There's that's kind of the same position. There's no excuses for this team to not be winning. This is the team that used to rule Formula E with an iron fist, and yet, uh, mm. as Gang mentioned, when they their du- their dual motor setup initially got nerfed and then got banned. Uh, they more or less had to restart from zero as far as their powertrain, and it shows. Um, and despite that, last year, there were races where they were fighting for wins. Yeah. The races where they probably should I have won. I think Wemmy was not his usual yeah. self last year either. Yeah, Wemmy was really rough last year, both uh, on base Ah, but he got in the Autosport Top 50, so who? So what do we know? That is, that is the Toyota Hypercar um, bonus right there. On top of that paycheck, it's a good bonus. Um, but both. Hey, what happened Pace to Oliver Rowland? And man, I don't even know. Um, that just didn't. It just didn't show last year. Anything either mm. wheel to wheel or mm. as far as pace. They got to put some W's on the board this year. I think both drivers yeah, have to. Be we, both, we know that both of them can. We know what both of them can do. We both. We know what this team can do. Hmm. So, did, did somebody mention Ollie Rowland a second ago? Yeah, I was wondering, where is he? Oh, he's at Mahindra, uh, part of the Stuart Haas races. Uh, yeah, this was pretty big. Oliver Rowland is back for the first time since season two at Mahindra Racing to partner Alexander Sims. Rowland has said, I've learned to race efficiently with more understanding of the series, and I'm in a good place in my career, ready to push forward. We want to be competitive and win races. That has to be the target. You know what's you know what alarmed me like re, like like to put my notes together for this show. Oliver Rowland is twenty nine. He's the same age as me now. I'm just like, what the hell? I watched you in Formula Two like last year. <laughs> like, what happened? Um, it's he's twenty nine. He be- and he became a dad over the off season as well. So congrats to the Rowland family. Um, but uh, God. Uh, He's back home at Mahindra, and he, he, he said he was very excited to be suplexed in the paddock, so I can't wait to... I want Mahindra to win at least one just for that spectacle. But, like, I don't know how I feel about Mahindra. I just... I look I look at the driver lineup, and I'm like, mm, I don't think it's quite on the same level as some of the other teams. They struggled a bit. There's you potential reckon? here. I... Oliver Rowland got most of Nissan's results to where people were wondering, hey, did Nissan let go of the wrong driver? Which I don't Mm. think is necessarily fair to Sebastian Wemmy. And then you've got Alexander Sims, who comes in pretty highly rated in his own regard. You know, he maybe didn't have all the single-seater results that, you know, Wemmy did, but he's won a race before. He can compete for podiums. Um, I think if they have... uh, 
if they have a motor, if they have a package that's capable, either one of these guys can compete for victories. Mm. What do you reckon, King? Yeah, I oh, I don't know where to particularly place my hinge right. I don't think they'll be chasing down victories this year. I think they'll be looking more at grabbing, like consistently finishing on the podium because it is, we're going to get to it later on. It's going to be real competitive at the front this year. Oh, yeah. I think so too. I think so too. Um, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not fully convinced on Mahindra all round. I mean, I know, I know they've had problems with, with energy recoup as well in previous years past as well. Um, it feels like they've been playing catch up for the last year or so. So I wonder how that will convert. And look, Roland's a great driver. I think, again, uh, Roland, I think, is another guy that is a bit better than the stats suggest in, in Formula E. I don't know where people got the idea that he was a qualifying specialist because that was literally on Formula E's website when they were talking about his move. I'm like, really? He's a bit better than that no um yeah. but um that's gonna be an interesting one to keep an eye on uh cam it's time to talk about your mans <laughs> we need to have an intervention no how i didn't, no, how I, didn't get to speak on, I didn't get to speak on mahindra <laughs> which is great well, because on. i have nothing to add <laughs> against any of the things <laughs> you three said you know that's i feel fine. like they're that's kind fine. of a <laughs> kind of a nothing burger of a team with a nothing burger of a driver lineup I do, I do Ooh. like, I do like, I do like Sims, but I like him a whole lot more in GTs than I do in single seaters. That's fair. That's fair to say. So, should we talk about your man's cam? Let's yeah, have let an interview. Let me, uh, let, let, let me get my barf bag. Okay. No, so, so here are some no. things that are different. We have Florian Modlinger, Modlinger coming over from Audi Sport apt. Rest in peace. Uh, he's going to be their new principal because Pascal Zerlinden uh, has left Porsche for Multimatic, who just so coincidentally happens to be manufacturing the LMP2 tubs, which will be used as the basis for the new Porsche LMDH. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we we'll build our there. own chassis. <laughs> but I, I still think got the key element was when. Zer Linden was head of uh, motorsport at Porsche. Not only was he team principal of the Formula E team, but he had to oversee all of Porsche's other projects. Porsche has uh, kind of reconfigured themselves internally so that Florian Modlinger, he's only team principal of just the Formula E team. Oh, I see. So it's, it's, I, it's, I more, so it's more of a bit... specialist role. <laughs> this feels different from what Porsche's normally used to doing. Now, of course, they still have familiar driver lineups. I'd First and foremost, we is... can report that Pascal Verlein's Pascal Verlein has his number 94 back. Mahindra have stopped holding Woo! it hostage, and I think that's going to be good for him. And Andre Lauder is back. Um, from what I understand, uh, these two have a very non-existing working relationship, but <laughs> they're still talented enough that you can't... Who are you going to replace them with? Like, Who? Judging by how Andre right. Lauder drove start, last year, I have a list. But they better start competing. <laughs> <laughs> I will oh, never. I, it'll be hard for me to lose faith in Andre Lauder. I, I love me some. Andre. I love me some Andre Lauder. But last year, Chief, Ooh, rough. Yeah, Chief. Yeah, that last Where? year was pretty bad. Give me the old Andre Lauder. <laughs> the the quintuple stinting at Le Mans and Audi, Andre Lauderer. The Andre Lauderer lowering the lap Give me the Andre Lauderer that would Andre Lauderer. Give me the Andre Lauderer that would win a Super Formula Championship by just winning half the races because he couldn't show up for the other half. Yeah. Like, uh, see, it's, I, it, it's tough to get a read on this team on. because when Porsche are good, they win races on track. Not necessarily in the rule yeah. book. I'm still angry. I will die angry on this hill. But when Porsche are bad, <laughs> they are right. like... They're the worst manufacturer in the sport. But was <laughs> Porsche anyone? Well, that's that's where I think having Modlinger is going to really help Porsche. Because not only was he technical director at, at 
Audi Apt, but during their championship winning season in seventeen eighteen, he was actually head of track operations. And uh. I think having someone with that experience and knowledge about how Formula E works will really help Porsche this season and avoid moments like, well, Puebla. Well, well and that is <laughs> what I was about to um, mention with RJ is that it's the the model that the Porsche FE team was under was a little bit different for them because normally Porsche kind of divides up their internal ops where they have one program under one set of people, one under another. And then they had more or less everything under one roof under Pascal. And man, that just that just didn't work at all uh, operationally. Um, so I wholeheartedly agree with King. I just think it's funny that Zerlinden's like, oh, yeah, I'm just go. I, I, I mean, I'm just, I'll see you all in like five minutes. Let me go to my new job. <laughs> hey, watch this. Hey, hold, hold my beer. Um, no, look, look. Lotterer was sloppy last year, to say the least. Again, I think he punched below his weight in Formula E last year. Pascal Verlaine is good enough to win a championship in this series. I'm adamant of this. Um, you know, another extremely high upside guy, but just couldn't put the results together. And the amount of times last year we were watching Formula E races and Cam was screaming at Pascal Verlaine to pass somebody. Um, that, like, he, uh, just so you know, Cam had an afro last year. This is how he looks like now. Um, so, <laughs> you know what's <laughs> to put it. <laughs> Porsche have a weird had a weird thing where Pascal Verline we were going at him for almost being too timid when the mm. chips are down in a late race situation where he needs to make a pass and then on the other hand here's Andre Lauderer one of the oldest guys Be in the field right and jacket. he there is not a gap that he will not go for he thinks he's still oh, in an oh, LMP1 car going around GTs, around the Porsche curves. No, Andre, you don't have that much more grip. You've just hit the wall. Yeah, I'm no, mad because so, I like, know you could do, that like... these two drivers are so much better than what they showed. Mm. Yeah. It's like, if you had like a Lindsay Lohan Freaky Friday like scenario, I think you'd have two really, really good racing drivers here. Um, so maybe, maybe that might, maybe that's what I'll have to come to to get the best out of Porsche, but... Uh, you know, I'm again could be all over as well. I think, as King alluded to, the concentrated focus on this effort for Formula E, I think, is definitely a, a, a positive step, and hopefully, it will bring them some rich rewards. Um, we'll Your pause a quick stuff. moment from going team by team, just to have a quick look at the calendar for this season. Um, that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of new additions as well. We go to Gibraltar for the first time and Vancouver for the first time as well um sadly it wasn't quite the full calendar we were hoping for in that sense in that uh we had a couple of races in china cancelled due to the you know our old friend our old friend the pandemic um covid still hasn't gone away unfortunately um and we were gonna have a race in cape town and i was really looking forward to uh, you know more motorsport in africa is always a good thing um as far as i'm concerned so the fact we we, we, we lost out we had a cape good Amerikash. we had a good um, Amerikash, and yeah, we, we lost it i know so you know we got to compensate for that roman berlin are now double headers um, the quick run down the full calendar. We have two races in Diria this weekend on January 20th, 29th. We go to Mexico City on February 12th. Then we take the good old Formula 2 last year, two month hiatus. Uh, <laughs> and we're back for a double header in Rome on April 9th and 10th. Um, so yeah, April 9th and 10th uh, for that one in Rome. Then we have Monaco, you know, the, the Monaco scheme. Grand Prix. The crown jewel oh. of motorsport. The, the yeah. Monaco Grand Prix. Yeah. The Monaco Monaco Eve, April 30th. Everybody settle in for that one because if it's anything like last year's, um, we're going to be in for a classic. That would be awesome. We got Monaco, Berlin. of course, a horsepower track known for wide overtaking opportunities. And then of we course. go to Berlin. Berlin. Good old, our good friends at the Tempelhof Airport. You know them. Tempelhof Nights. Uh, May 15th. Yep. May 15th, 14th, 15th on that one. Then uh, Gibraltar makes its debut on June 4th. Um, then we take a month out uh, over the, over the uh, late spring. And then we go into Vancouver for a brand new round. I think it's the old cart layout, or at least part of the old cart track. It, it's, part of it. 
Yeah, it's in the same area. It's a different track. Yeah, close yeah. enough. So we've got Vancouver on July 2nd, and then King's hometown of New York. Uh, on J- Bing Bong, indeed, on July 16th <laughs> and 17th for rounds 11 and 12. Yeah. Who's, who's, uh, about to, we... who's about to send it into turn one saying, Bing Bong, fuck your life? <laughs> Andre Lotterer, of course. He's the one that came out with GG, everyone. It's, it's got to be Lotterer, surely. If the boot fits, as far as I'm concerned. And then they go to my hometown of London. We're back in London at the Excel Centre on July 30th and 31st. And then finally, uh, we, we, we go to Seoul in South Korea uh, for rounds 15 and 16 on August 13th and 14th for the double header season finale. So double headers in Diria, Rome, and then the last three rounds in New York, London, and Seoul. So 16 total races on the Formula E calendar this season in uh, 10 different spots around the world. Uh, hopefully we'll get that Cape Town race in next year, please. That would be, that'd be nice. Thank you. Um, so that, that's, that's the calendar. Right, we're into the thicker end of the, the, the teams now. And I think, well, I think we call this bracket teams that could potentially go all the way, I think, if... The, if the chips fall their way this season, yeah. I think that's yeah. fair. This is like your, this is like your, um, I guess your, your Arsenal, your Tottenham, your Leicester City bracket. If we were doing Premier League comparisons, mm-hmm. and uh, mm. let's start with Rocket Venturi Racing. Uh, they have Eduardo Martara, who, if you could believe it, was last year's championship runner-up, <laughs> and they now have Brazil Elon Musk himself, the one-time future president of the FIA. A damn good LMP driver in his own right. And, of course, a past Formula League champion, Lucas Degrassi. Um, they were quick in testing, but we don't know what that means because the Valencia test doesn't always necessarily translate into results, but we do know that these guys have proven track records, and Venturi is a well-run team with some good bits of horsepower. Team I believe they still have the Mercedes. Yeah, they yeah, still yeah. have the Mercedes power unit. Yeah, they still have the Mercedes power unit, though I should point out that uh, they might be uh, Dragon Penske, but on steroids, where it is heavily rumored, based off a recent rule change, allowing uh, manufacturers to enter more than one brand with the same powertrain and the same homologation, but they're both manufacturers. They're not like manufacturer-customer. And... Uh, which brand hmm. recently announced that they're entering the championship and already have a sister brand in said championship? Maserati, Maserati, Maserati. I was so, really scared, given the Mercedes factor here, that you were about to say Rocket Venturi Smart. I was got, I was <laughs> terrified for a second. <laughs> so the the heavily circulated rumor is that Maserati won't be entering their own team. They'll be taking over a currently independent team. And right. the team that they're rumored to be taking over is Venturi. Oh boy. Makes perfect sense, but... given the fact that, as we'll talk about later, the three-pointed star is uh, going supernova and disappearing into <laughs> that long night. Yeah, so they're bailing, and Venturi, I think it's fair to say, have a pretty good base as it is right now in terms of car, in terms of strengths, in terms of driver lineup. Mortara is a nutter, but he's incredibly fast when he wants to be. Um, Again, one of those guys that's a very good... And look, Lucas Degrassi is Lucas Degrassi. He can win any given race on paper if if things go his way. Um, It's a very, very strong all-round team. Again, if... Testing, you never quite know for sure, but all the signs trended positively. Uh, all the talk in the paddock, I be- from whispers that I was hearing from people, was that the Merck's power unit is top notch, and that Venturi's going to be right up the thick of it. And yeah, they did they, they, they oh, did yeah. their first qua- they did their first quality trial run um, during that Valencia test, and it was both Venturi's in the final. Now, as an asterisk. They were given by runs to the final because they got out of their group's fastest, but it was both Venturi's in the final with Mortara beating the Grassi by two hundredths of a second. Um, that's probably so, kind of what I expect. Um, you know, I expect Eduardo Mortara to be the the guy that leads this team, 
This is not necessarily Lucas Degrassi slander so much, because I know we could have very many opportunities to slander Lucas Degrassi for things that have nothing to do with his racecraft. Because no, no, no. Eduardo Martara, as much of a nutter as he is, Lucas Degrassi lives that life. Um, but <laughs> totally. Eduardo Martara, Eduardo Martara is good for a win a season, if not more. I mean, he finished second in the championship last year for crying out loud for whatever mm. that's worth. Uh, he got Venturi their very first win and handily outperformed a multiple Formula One Grand Prix winner of Felipe Massa. The guy's good. <laughs> he is very good. And like I said, he's fast as hell. And like I said, if if with the format changing for qualifying as well, if you can get his car in the thick of it more frequently, I don't see any reason why he can't mount a title, ch- a, a proper title campaign. Not that it not that it wasn't last year, but we all know last year was a hot mess, um, to say the least. But this is a very strong team on paper, um, and I I think they could be prime title contenders going forward there's a lot to like about this team going forward um certainly keep an eye on that um bmw we hardly knew ye um as they go you off to can't say where the world <laughs> um they've been they've now left to design more beaver designed front ends in their rate in their road cars um Uh, um, they have gone and unfortunately we've got some blockchainers that have come in and to replace them as their lead sponsor at Andretti it's the Avalanche Andretti Formula E team because we all know we love the blockchain here on this show isn't that right gentlemen Uh, uh, but you know what I do love this team yes Ah, yes. Avalanche Andretti Racing uh, featuring Cloud Strife and uh, Tifa Lockhart <laughs> as the uh, driver line. <laughs> that is that is Italian uh, parliamentary legend Tifa Lockhart. I have you know. um, Jake Dennis, by far and away one of the most impressive drivers, especially when he turned it out of the second half of last A revelation. season. Revelation. And Oliver Askew, of the three rookies, is in the best position to see. Now... I don't think it's fair that this is his second option after no IndyCar team seemingly wanted him after one Baffled. injury and pandemic-affected season of McLaren and then a handful of tryouts that went nowhere. But this team's got the resources at hand to make sure that Askew can succeed on a regular basis. By the way, he'll be the first American driver to race full-time in this series. Hey. Yeah, it's been a while since we days finally got one! USA! Um, USA! USA! <laughs> yeah, I can't disagree. Um, Jake Dennis was fantastic to finish up last year. Uh, it took him a little while. Oh, boy. But when he switched it on, he was arguably the most consistent of all the drivers in the late running just because of the complete chaos going on around him. So, I expe- mm. actually, I expect a lot out of Dennis uh, this year. Ask you... It's the usual rookie and FE factor. Um, Will he acclimatize to the cars quickly? Will it take him a while? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. I think for Andretti, it's kind of a bit of circle in the wagons here where it's like, without BMW, even though we're at the end of the rule cycle and there's not that much left to gain, there's still there's still some space left. And without a manufacturer backing you, yes, Andretti was here before BMW. Uh, things are going to be hard with it's everyone coming game. up. It, it's yeah. a different game with uh, as much competition around them and new manufacturers on the way in. There are going to be another team who's going to be looking to have a decent enough showing this year that whether an existing manufacturer partners with them. I know there is, there are significant rumors that they are going to tie up with Porsche. I'll have to see where that plays out. I think they need to, I'm not saying they have to go out and win the championship, but um, tread gotta, the water. They show, Don't take on too much they, water this year. They gotta, they gotta look like they want to compete for championships. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say so. I think this is the team that's got the biggest trap door underneath them, i.e. if things don't go well, I could see this team taking a slide. Um, yeah. um, and especially given that now we're probably expecting Jake Dennis to put a title run together. Like, he was a massive surprise last year. 
Now we know how good he is. Um, so now we're going to be thinking, oh, anything less than title contending, and we're going to be looking at Dennis like, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, we, 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 were you sure about his like top 15 or O-Sport position last year? Ooh. Um, so, you know, it's going to be one to keep an eye on, certainly. I think there's potential for them to hit, to fall off a cliff here, but I also think they've got enough talent where they could still stick their nose in the title fight. This, this is going to be a very intriguing team to keep an eye on. I think I think there's a lot that could go either way on, on, on Avalanche Andretti. I think that's certainly going to be one of the fascinating teams to keep an eye on um, going forward. Uh, ooh, next on, next on the list, Envision. Uh, now the in last, green. Um, the last Audis. The last of the Audis. Uh yeah, despite Audi's factory team was drawing from a Formula E last season, the four rings will still be present on the grid with Envision continuing to race Audi's powertrain. Robin Friends told the Redacted that Envision still has the same support of Audi. There won't be any big changes in the team's relationship with the German manufacturer, and Audi still has updates coming for the powertrain. So, really, it's an Audi in all but name, basically? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for... It, they truly are the last Audis. They might not be an Audi factory team, but Audi is still developing their powertrain, and uh, it's it wasn't a bad powertrain. No, so, it wasn't. Um, Red Bull Red Bull powertrains, Audi Sport, developing a power unit and then not having your name on it. Um, although at least, <laughs> ju- just like the. Uh, just like the little HRC badge that's going to be on the next Red Bull, uh, I expect some Four Rings badges on here, so they'll get some credit. Um, yeah, they'll get some credit, and they deserve it, because uh, this lineup's really good. Uh, Cassidy mm-hmm. will be better at his second season. Um, and Please. Robin Friends is Robin Friends. He is uh, consistently talented, consistently brilliant, capable of winning a championship uh, if the circumstances allow for it. Mr. Top Five, Mr. Robin Friends. I, I, uh, I, hmm, I think I think they're going to be mad stable. I, I think it's just going to be a really solid, stable team with a high. F- you know what? Being a high floor team in this scenario might be the best way to go. Quite frankly, yeah. it might get um, you a championship I think, in the sport. Yeah, it might do because honestly, I think the floor is very high with these dudes. Like Robin Friends is just a perennial top tier dude in Formula E. Has been. Pretty much from day one, um, since he cracked into the series in season two, I think it was. And Cassidy, ignoring Rome last year, I think I think the upside is high well, on Cassidy. Uh, you know, and I, I think Cassidy will be better in the, this year. I, I think there's a lot to like about Audi here, or uh, Audi Envision, I should say. See, see, I've already um, called it an Audi. Just, <laughs> just, just scribble out the four. At least we're not calling them Virgin anymore. <laughs> I did a lot of yeah, yeah, we've um, lost Audi, and then we've lost Branson too. It's, 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 it's just not the is, same. Uh... It's like, um, oh, dude. Uh, Robin Friends is very good. Robin Friends has one of the he has one of the highest floors of any driver in this series. Has for a few years. Cassidy, similar with Andre Lauderer, we know how good his peak is. His seal, his floor last year though. His floor last year crashed down through the crust of the earth, going straight for the core, and mm. none, none hurt more than when he had that phenomenal pole position, and then crashed at turn one. Yeah. Oh, that broke um, me, man. <laughs> yeah, because we we love Nick Cassidy here. Um, we we do. The, uh, we the world's. Um, second largest super gt podcast we uh i want to see fewer mistakes out of him because when cassidy Mm -hmm. is good he's usually contending for top fives to podium yeah sure sure whoo high floor Uh, that's certainly a good way to go for the envision racing team um let's talk about high floor dudes let's talk Um, about ds cheetah yeah, rumors Ooh, of their demise. Fun. Rumors of their demise were very much exaggerated. But they are going to be a little bit different this year. Thomas Chevalier, am I pronouncing that correctly? He used to run um, Citroen's World Touring Car Championship team that built a dominant car that flattened the series into extinction. 
Uh, so now he's going to be running the team while Mark Preston moves up to CEO and focusing on commercial opportunities. But most importantly, they still have past champion Antonio Felix Acosta and past two-time champion Jean-Eric Vern. What a wonderful odd couple. What a great odd couple that Love this team is. And, and they work. They work together when, when they're they, on. Don't, they, they don't work together, to but they work. <laughs> they work. Yeah, they, they're chaotic good. <laughs> oh dear um, I still have flashbacks of the Costa winning the title and Vern giving him the biggest pickup hug you'll ever see in your life they are chaotic good um, but look they look it's 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 the best driver lineup in the series you don't need me to tell you that like it's they're like they they are the strongest team on the sport on paper I've gone there for the last three or four years now they're an excellent team. I mean, the issue is, is that really is that last year they were going through so much turmoil. There was rumors of a sale that collapsed. There was there was talk that the drivers weren't being paid. Um, you know, it took DS putting more money into the pot for them to keep going. There was a lot of, you know, negative press around this team last year. And hopefully the reshuffled management, um, you know, helps out. And hopefully it's stable. Because if it is stable, this they're probably going to cakewalk the field <laughs> if everything yeah, like, works out i mean we we thought that last year and then mm. with all that turmoil behind the scenes they just never they started off the year in the dumps and while they improved they never got back to what we expect from DSG, i got a text which is i got a text from a friend of the show um mm. i got a text from a friend of the show hazel southwell who's told me that uh you know, they were mostly scuppered by their powertrain late and ended up dropping points with some bad simulations. So they're expected to be better this season than they were last. Mm. Um, what do you reckon, considering, considering who their new team principal is, uh, Shiver Share, uh, and, you know, and Maserati entering the championship. This is a seems like a the start of a big Stellantis full court press to try to dominate Formula E. <laughs> Dodge. When are we getting Dodge in the sport? <laughs> Dodge <laughs> SRT Tomahawk we, Formula E. How do we put uh, how do we put a screw supercharger on an EV motor? Then Dodge. We're gonna figure that then out eventually. Enter. And we're gonna paint oh. it plum crazy. I, I, like, all I was going to say is I heard King say full court press and I immediately had war flashbacks of current Manchester United and Ralph Ragnick's defensive formations. Um, if, there's no, if you know, you know. Um, but uh, look, look if, if, if the reshuffle works, they could run everybody over. It's that sort of Mar Marquez sort of floor ceiling argument we've got right now. Where if, the, if the ceiling kicks in, cancel Christmas. Um, if it doesn't, it could be very interesting. But... If it all works out, they will probably win the title because they are excellent. They have excellent drivers and, well, they're the excellence of the field, really. Um, and, you know, certainly have been up until last year um, where a lot went on behind the scenes. But DSGT, so definitely, you know, you probably, if I was a bookmaker, well, even though I do work for one, they probably would be favourites on paper uh, just because it's, you know, the safer pick. Um, Jaguar! It's a Jaguar! But it's okay, it's because jag. they've got a Jag. It's a Jag, you it's, um, it's a Jag. Well, second last year. Um, mm. Driver lineup, Mitch Evans, my own personal mortal enemy, and Sam Bird. <laughs> they just re-upped Sam Bird for a multi-year deal. And then you realize that, like, Sam Bird is 35 now, which means... Yeah, he was he was a guy that was passed up out of GP2 because of his age, not because he was necessarily bad. Uh, yeah. Bird had this to say going into Season 8. The whole team is determined, focused, and ready to get results. And that's exactly who I want to be working with, talking of Jaguar TCS Racing. Now it's time to get Season 8 out of the way and ensure we put all of our off-season practice and learnings into action to score as many points as possible. He won in Deria. He won in New York City. He's won in every season of Formula E. Jaguar almost had won either the drivers of the team's championships locked up until late, until they didn't. Came close, though. Yeah. A couple of mechanical failures and a couple of uh, brain failures. Well, you could say that for pretty much the entire grid. Um, 
but especially mm. with Jaguar, really scuppered what was a great year for them last year, um, yeah. where they had consistently their two drivers top five or six, more often than not, in the podium places. They should be pretty good. Good. They, they, they should be very good. I, I think Mitch Evans should have won the championship last year. <laughs> and if you could have said that. You could have said that last year. You could have said that two years ago. Uh, I know. I, I'm like I am of the mind that Jaguar are always going to be in contention for both championships, but they don't mm-hmm. have what it takes to go over the hill and seal it. They're not winning the championship. Whoa. Dang. You're, you're that sure, King. Yes, I am that sure they won't be winning either championship. Either. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's, well, uh, it's, someone, uh, someone, etch, someone write that down on fine silk and nail it to the wall so we can check it in a year. Uh, it's, is that oh. the hot, that's the hottest take of this uh, preview. And I am marking that clip for later. <laughs> that, that's the, hot, that's I, the hottest take since I picked Max Verstappen to win the Drivers' Championship. Oh, please, like that was a hot take. Anyway. <laughs> well, it's a trap, right? See, that's the thing. I was joking when I was cracking with you about that. This one actually does feel like a trap because it's like everything about this team makes me want to pick them. It's just something will not work out. Sam Bird will put it in the fence. Mitch Evans' powertrain will die on him randomly somewhere. Something will go wrong. They're early 2010s Ferrari. Every time they have that championship right in their sights, something goes wrong and they end up yeah, just not, not doing it. It was The powertrain basic... failures for me were the big ones last year because they had three or four retirements where they were in prime position to bring home a big bag of points and the car died on them. They, they, fact, it's I like got to Dick see one of them in right races. in front of my eyes. Yeah, in New York. Oh boy, like Jaguar. King's not high on them. <laughs> More on that. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. They will be winning races. They will be getting podiums. But I yeah. don't think they'll be getting the championship. Yeah, I, I will say this. They're much better than their Formula One iteration, but something about bars being placed within the mantle and all in yeah, terms of operational, uh, of, uh, operational synergy and all that. So I think it's time that we talk about our outgoing... Running out the door, we are we are heading out. We are not getting back together. Mercedes EQ Formula E team with your reigning CM defending Punk. undisputed <laughs> Formula E champion Nick DeVries and Stoffel Van Dorn, who at times looked like he was winning the title until he was not. But <laughs> they aren't leaving anything on the table this year. Uh, they've got Gary Paffett. Remember him? He's back to manage the team. Uh, yeah. Stoffel Van Dorn. Super Formula alum has the former engineer of another Super Formula alum, Nick Cassidy, that would be Stephen Lane, uh, to help him try and close the, the gap with Nick DeVries, who, let's not forget, was in serious talks for a Formula One seat off of his Formula E success for a hot minute. Mm. Um, and the Mercedes uh, motor is still really, really good, as we have discussed are these the favorites, gentlemen? Without a doubt, they're not only driving for the championship; they're driving for literally their lives because they're going to try to pull a deal to try to pull a deal together to get another manufacturer into the sport so they can continue on as a team. Right, right. So the it it it's just, it's like it's like I remember reading about this and seeing how awkward it was that this was a team that was really trying to get all its eggs in this basket, and then it was like, oh, we're quitting. Wait, what? <laughs> like, and, yeah, yeah. That was... They moved to the Bricksworth. They moved to the Brackley. And now, now they're quitting. What? Yep. Now what they're, and they're, mo- they're moving into, uh, they're moving under a lake. As you do. So, they're putting all their eggs into this basket to, to salvage something from this team. So, like, they've not rested on their laurels at all. They've had a big reshuffle behind us. They've tried to adapt more staff in there. Um, and whatnot. So hopefully it will all it, it will all come together for them, so they can sa- they can save this team because the notes I put it in there as the last dance because it very well could be for this Mercedes factory. But again, the powertrain is excellent. Well, they it have is two excellent factory. 
We mm. don't know about HWA. Yeah. yeah. We don't know. But, uh, look, they're an incredible team on paper. Nick DeFries yeah. was outstanding last year and, and, and came through when it mattered last year to win the title. Um, you know, in, in when when all the animals are chaotic, he was the least chaotic of them all. Um, and Stoffel Van Dorn was, again, right in the mix as well until the end. The ninth from last year is a bit of a red herring. We know he was better than that on paper. Again, oh, the chaos yeah, of without a, a doubt. super tight title. Um, so in an alternate me, universe, yeah. this is the young and exciting mm. team that's leading McLaren into the future. But, of right. course, it didn't play out like that. Of course, it's in Formula E instead, because sod it, we can't have ni the nicest things in motorsport. Uh, there's always going to be a catch somewhere. Um, before we get out of here, gentlemen, give me your team. Give me your Constructors Champions first. <laughs> Don't all rush in at once. <laughs> I've uh, never seen so many confused faces on here before. I think... Jeez. I, I would uh, go all in on Tachita. I think Tachita are going to be the team champions. Okay. Go on, Cam. Pick Porsche. Go on. Go on. You know you want to. Me. You're daring me to do it. Go You're on. You're daring me to do it. <laughs> but, uh... I'll buy I you a Verline be... cap if they come through. <laughs> no, you won't. I will. Good. Second. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess if he wins, I guess if he keeps winning, he won't have to pass anybody. Because he'll just be in first the whole time. That is tempting. Um, <laughs> I think that the team champion will be DS Tachita. Okay. Come back. I'll come back and to I... you on that, Cam. RJ, mm. team. Um, in this sport, uh, we need bold ideas and bold strategies because, you know, Formula E had a rough season uh, in its perception in the media uh, last mm. year because of a number of trade wreck races. But that's why I think we need bold vision uh, for the future. And that's why I think that Envision are going to win the team's championship. Ooh, he's gone for the high floor. I, I'm going to say Mercedes. I just have a feeling they'll screw up the least, and I think I have the least amount of question marks about them as a team going forward. Um, so I'm going to pick Mercedes, which is, you know, a bold prediction for me to pick a Mercedes on this bold podcast. Bold on let this me, show, let me, let me tell let you. Let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, let's make it interesting. Driver's title. Well, Again, don't you know, rush in at once. Obviously, because I picked the cheater on the team's. To win the drivers, it's got to be Antonio Felix da Costa, right? The Costa over Jeff? Okay, okay. All, yeah. all I mean, in. it's happened once. It can happen again. Sure. What do you reckon, Cam? He's still thinking about it. Pascal Verline. Oh, that wow. Oh, there's, wow. There's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no faith in that, but you know what? It's, <laughs> I love it. Um, I love it. Um, I love it. It's Pascal Verline. Uh, we, got, we, got we got a Pascal pick. I love it. RJ, you, you, you know you want to pick Cassidy, don't you? You do. I don't, because I want to pick <laughs> Stoffel Van Dorn, because this may oh. be his last season, because um, I don't know if you heard, but both DeVries and Van Dorn have been shopping around for new rides, and I don't know how long. Even if this team stays together... I don't know if DeFries and Van Dorn are coming back to that team, let alone this mm. series. Yeah, that's going to uh, be interesting. So I think Van Dorn's got to make the most of what could be his last chance at a championship, or he comes back the following season and makes me look stupid. Who knows? <laughs> this is tough for me. I want, I'm want. i tempted to say Nick DeFries retains. But... The, the, the Jags tempting me in. <laughs> Mitch, know, he, he... Mitch, Mitch, I, I, I think it's going to I think <laughs> it's going to be time for Mitch, bruh. <laughs> I, Let's fool, I... fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, <laughs> shame on me. Fool me thrice, what are we doing here? <laughs> I 
So so on so on one side of the room, at least on my screen, because uh, myself and Dre are on the left side. One side mm. we have totally sensible picks, and then complete <laughs> madness on the other. I don't think Mitch Evans is a mad pick. I really don't think it is, but here we are. Um, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see how we go. He's got like, a again, yeah. Season 8 of Formula E kicks off this weekend in Diria for two rounds there. We'll be back next week to talk about all of that action. Uh, but until then, basically, you can find us one more time. I'm at a website, Motorsport101, for all the details. Our YouTube, motorsport 101com um, um, Sorry, YouTube, YouTube.com, for slash Motorsport101, I should say, sorry. Facebook, slash Motorsport101. Twitter, Motorsport underscore 101. Our personal handles are on the screen right now, at Harrison101HD, at RJ O'Connell, at Ryan Eric King, at Seedbuckley917, and our Instagram as well, at Motorsport101Pod for extra bits on there as well. Like I said, we'll be back next week to talk Wait. all the action from we'll all be from back Diria, But But before we go, just before we go, for you sports car fans out there as well, subscribe to us at youtube.com forward slash motorsport101. We'll be live streaming a good chunk of the Rolex 24 hours at uh, Daytona this weekend. Um, so if you're if you're into your sports cars or into your endurance racing, that's bound to be fun. Uh, it's, it's, look, let's put it this way. It's the one endurance race that I watch every year. So that, that's got to be worth something, right? It's got to be a sports car, car oh, man, if it's, uh, man, if, if the qualifying race was anything to go by. Oh, yeah, that was fun. You're going to be getting a whole lot of sleep uh, <laughs> during this here Rolex 24 <laughs> Um, I don't know how much of it I'm going to be available for because, uh, one, the day job, and two, yep. um, catastrophic snowstorm hitting the northeast of the United States. All right, Fun. Northeaster, baby, let's go. Me and King and Cameron in the same boat. We're snowed in, baby. You know where we're at? We're inside! <laughs> we're inside! <laughs> oh, Great. Dre, Dre's going to be stuck as the only person doing the sports car coverage. I know! It's, it's everybody's <laughs> worst nightmare! <laughs> but uh, I will definitely be here for at least the sunset and final portions of that stream as well. Like I said, if it's, the, if it's a sports car race that I watch, you know it must be pretty fun most of the time. So check it out if you haven't already. Check out the Steam, um, check out the Raw before as well. That was a very fun sprint race uh by their standards as well so check that out as well so again youtube.com forward slash motorsport 101 subscribe to us on there for all the details on that you can follow us on social media we'll give us some updates on that as well as they go live and as they happen so until then i've been dre harrison uh, they've been ryan eric king rj o'connell and cam buckley until next time thanks for watching and sayonara there is one more driver that we forgot to mention that is not going to be in the Rolex 24, but is going to be part of the festivities. And all I have to say is... Hyundai yes. yes. is going Robert to Michael. fucking steamroll the TCR field in the Pilot Challenge race. There's only one Bobby Wickens. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Wickens! I believe in Wayne Taylor racing supremacy. <laughs>